How to Create AGI I believe artificial general intelligence is possible and this video shows how we can make computers which think the way the human brain does. There is plenty of speculation about AGI and rather than describing the gamut of competing ideas, in this video I'll describe my own research direction to build an end-to-end -end AGI system. This video is in three sections. I'll start by explaining my simplifying assumptions and then move on to the necessary components of AGI and conclude with my expectations for the system I am currently working on. As I explain my project direction, you may see ideas which benefit your development as well. Why am I taking this development approach to AGI? I have a broad background as an electrical engineer from microprocessor design and semiconductor fabrication to digital design. I also have a master's degree in computer science and have developed and managed mountains of software including AI software and several neurological test instruments. Since no one today knows exactly how to create AGI, experimentation is the way to go and the system described here is the first step. So what are my simplifying assumptions and their impact? I assume that intelligence occurs in the brain and primarily in the neocortex. While other areas of the brain play a part, they are primarily busy maintaining your body and their contribution to intelligence, while perhaps important, represents a small part of the AGI project. If this assumption is incorrect, AGI becomes a bigger project. Second, I assume that intelligence occurs in neurons and their digital function. While there is speculation that more is needed, like quantum effects or microtubules or glial cells, etc., I believe we should pursue the obvious digital neural synaptic functionality first and only pursue these other avenues if the digital neuron model proves insufficient. A related item, think digital. Most of today's neuron models presume an analog neuron, perhaps with a value representing the firing rate. I assume that neurons only process information in terms of discrete neural spikes. This assumption creates opportunities for interesting, unexplored neural circuits with a drastically reduced computational load. With this assumption, I am developing the Brain Simulator 2 software, which can emulate a huge array of spiking neurons on standard hardware. Assumption 3. I think of AGI in terms of primitive man. Human brains haven't changed structurally in thousands of years, and I focus on our vast ability to learn, plan, and act in three dimensions. Mathematics, logic, numbers, writing, etc. are recent learned developments and are not inherent in the human mind or intelligence. Early man had a great ability at recognizing objects. He had language, he could find his way through a significant area of wilderness, but his brain had the capacity for learning how to write, add, or play chess without any specialized modification. Assumption 4. I assume that AGI and true intelligence are not as complex as most people think. I would like to bound this complexity in two ways. First, your complete DNA with its 3 billion base pairs represents only 750 megabytes of information. And only a small fraction of our genome defines the structure of our brain, much less for our neocortex. So it is conceivable that our intelligent structure can be defined by only 10 to 100 megabytes of information. Since there are many more neurons and synapses than DNA defining their structure, the brain and intelligence must be defined with repeating patterns or rules expressible in a relatively small body of information. Much, much less than the body of AI software already written. Second, the 16 billion neurons of the neocortex place a hard limit on the amount of information it can contain. Although some information is stored in synapses, there is no conceivable way to retrieve any information without firing a neuron. If no neurons fire, no information is expressed. To represent a sequence of letters, for example, you need a neuron chain with one neuron per item, like this, or two neurons per item to control the rate of the retrieval. Whenever data is ordered, sequentially or spatially, at least one neuron is required for each item. 
So my estimate of the brain's storage capacity is within the realm of today's computers. The multi-petabyte estimates of brain content you may have seen actually represent the structure and state of the brain, much as defining the charge state and connections of every transistor in a computer would require an extremely large data set, much larger than the computer's capacity. Assumption 5. AGI requires robotics. Consider a common limitation of many AI programs, that they can manipulate words or images but have no understanding that things exist in a world. This little robot might learn more about a dog by interacting for 10 seconds than from any number of images. How could an AGI understand that actions it takes cause reactions if it has no ability to interact? The robot need not be complex, but should include motion, vision, and manipulation. On a related note, I assume that enough functionality can emerge from a powerful desktop computer controlling a simple robot to validate these design ideas. Assumption number six, Many of these design ideas are adaptations of existing technologies, and I assume that large portions of AGI can be adapted from available software. Number seven, of course, the biggest assumption is that a system built with the following components will actually display intelligence. No one knows. But as you review the system I'm describing, you'll see I intend to create some capabilities absent in current systems, and at the very least, to create some really useful stuff and to extend our body of knowledge about the nature and limitations of intelligence and computation. So what is my overall assumption? That AGI is doable and is not as big a project as most people think. Here is the functionality I'm working on, with a block diagram of an end-to-end -end AGI system. I'll explain how the various modules rely on and differ from existing technology, starting with input processing. At the very least, AGI needs vision and sound input. Today's computer vision and speech recognition applications go too far. AGI just needs feature extraction. This allows for more generalization so that both sound and vision can accept any generalized input so the AGI could learn a new language or learn new symbols. The actual recognition is done by the next step in the block diagram, the abstract knowledge base. Again, we need more abstraction. Think of a semantic network, but without the words. Each node is just a bit and is representative of a single neuron. We humans know about things and their attributes independent of language. We can see a yellow square and understand its attributes of yellowness or squareness. Alternatively, we can consider yellow and recall other yellow things or square things independent of whether we know the words yellow and square. When you consider how the knowledge base might be constructed from neurons, you'll conclude, as I have, that the neurons available for this function limit the human knowledge base to millions of nodes, well within current computational abilities. Number three, AGI needs a reality model. We understand things in part because we can model our reality in our minds. This lets us comprehend things as existing in an environment with spatial relationships to other things. So we know the difference between a thing and a picture of a thing. Today's mobile robots do this in a limited way. Generalizing on this concept to create an internal model which can incorporate arbitrary learned objects with any number of attributes is one key to AGI. Number four, AGI needs the ability to plan. One of the things which differentiates thinking behavior is imagining the results of doing something before you do it. This ability could lead to logic, mathematics, and many thinking activities. 
You could learn the rules of the game and play chess by planning your next move. Planning is a generalization of a learning system like AlphaGo Zero, generalized to work with learned real-world things, well beyond the limited moves and rules of a game. Which brings us to item 5, AGI needs goals. In order to learn or evaluate decisions, the AGI needs a set of scales to measure against and I am calling these goals. I am initially considering only two goals, safety and curiosity. This should motivate a robot to learn and explore without doing too much damage. Number six, output processing. After a behavior is selected, it is passed to robotic control or speech synthesis, both of which need to be adapted to learn and become more adept at new behaviors and new words. Here is an overall block diagram of the system I am working on. For more details, you can read my book, Will Computers Revolt? But you can also read the relevant section free here. I also recommend watching my other videos on the future AI YouTube channel, many of which detail individual aspects of AGI. What do I expect from such a system? Starting small, I imagine a simple mobile robot with vision and manipulators. It will learn about a very limited physical environment and about a small number of things within that environment. I would expect its software to learn about its own mobility, how to manipulate small objects. It might learn what is meant by on top of or in front of. It might understand what picking up or putting down are. Solidity, gravity, balance, shape, and color. Even such a simple environment contains a list of concepts that will tax any AGI's initial implementation. A word about scale. None of the features I've proposed require great scale in software development, data, or computational power. An initial implementation would handle a small number of objects, a few tens of words, a few possible actions from which to plan. Would such a system appear intelligent? Perhaps. How many objects, actions, words, etc. are needed to appear intelligent? We don't know. Perhaps just a few hundred. I hope to find out. I also hope to learn if additional modules are needed for AGI and to find further research. This video has introduced the Brain Simulator 2 project. I plan to share developments and new discoveries as they emerge. If you found these ideas interesting or useful, be sure to subscribe and share this video with your colleagues. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.